I've always lived by the notion that you're never too old to have a happy childhood. So I've, I've made up for that in a world of hot rodding and fun cars. But I do like cars that have had some interesting ownership, done something extraordinary on the track, or unique in their own way. So it's the story. Sitting behind us here, your Bizzarini. This is a very special car. Tell us why. This year they're honoring Giotto Bizzarini. And this is an ESO or a Bizzarini. And he was the guy at Ferrari. He was the head race engineer. He was just an engineering genius. It's amazing, really, that this car is here. And it has the status and credibility. Because for such a genius, Bizzarini as a brand, it wasn't the most successful era of any car company, was it? And yet this one went and won Le Mans. He drove the car to Le Mans. It was his works entry. Yeah. It finished in the top 10, won its class, went on to race again. It was sold to a movie actor, Remington Olstad, who had a restaurant in Rome. When I bought the car, one of the kind of features that I would have improved had I been the designer were the sides. Because I thought it's just kind of slab side and why doesn't it contour underneath? So I made that comment to Peter Brock. He said, Bruce, you don't get it, which is true on a lot of things. He said, Bitstreeting was the first guy to figure out slab sides and how it works aero. This car at Le Mans was second to the big block GT40s. It was faster than anything else at Le Mans. It was 190 miles an hour. We're drawing to this car because of its rock star good looks. It makes great noise. It walked the walk, won Le Mans. It was his most advanced race car. It checks every box for me.